find the derivative of the following functions. For my first function, I have f of x equal to x to the 3x minus 1. So I just follow my nose with the product rule. We're going to have derivative of x is 1. I write in my second term plus x, and then I have to take the derivative of 2, 3x minus 1. Now, we can think of this as a composition. If I call this 2 to a u function x to base 2, that would be 2 to whatever's on the inside equals 2 to the u. We have this function composed with 3x minus 1. So what I need to do is do a chain rule correctly. The derivative of 2 to the u is just rewrite 2 to the u and then put natural log of 2 out in front. So we do that. I put in for my u 3x minus 1 and then I have to take the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 3x minus 1 is going to give me 3. Not very illuminating. You could put that on a note card, but it's not so hard to just work from first principles. So let's take a look. I have that 2, my base, is equal to e raised to the natural log of 2. Because natural log and the exponential functions are inverse to each other, they're just going to cancel here, and I'm just left with what's on the inside, which is 2. So what I'm going to do is, where I have 2 in the original function, I'm going to put in e to the natural log of 2. We can expand that, and then our top now looks like 3 natural log of 2, x minus natural log of 2. It looks ugly, but it's actually quite nice. 3 natural log of 2 is just a constant. Minus natural log of 2 is a constant. So we're looking at constant times x minus another constant. Not bad. Let's take the derivative. So product rule again, the x goes away. I carry this mess around. Plus x times the derivative of this thing. Now. The derivative of e to the u is just the rule. Okay, I rewrite my e to the u, and then I just take the derivative of u. So all we're doing is rewrite this, and then take the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top, okay, that's constant times x, just gives me 3 natural log of 2. The constant here, minus natural log of 2, goes away. So we're just multiplying by 3 natural log of 2. Now we have these two beast floating around, but just remember, that's just rewriting 2 to the 3x minus 1. So I'm just going to put them back in, and now I have my answer, which agrees with what I got using the rule. Let's try one with a logarithm. We have gx equals log base 2 of x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x. Now, I can use a rule for the derivative of log to base 2, but I'd rather just rewrite my um, logarithm in terms of the natural log right off the bat, because then I'm just carrying constants around, and I don't have any overhead thinking about what's going on. I don't have to invoke any rules either. So the rule is going to be, if I have log 2 of whatever, I can rewrite that as natural log of whatever, divided by the natural log of the base that I started with. So I can rewrite this whole thing as natural log of this over natural log of 2. Now, this is great. Natural log has rules for how to deal with products and quotients on the inside. We pull them out as sums and differences on the outside. So this top part factors as x minus 3, x plus 1. So when I break this down, it's x minus 3, x plus 1 over x. So I hit a natural log with each piece. The ones on top keep positive signs. The one in the bottom picks up a minus sign. So we rewrite like this. Okay, I haven't even gone to a derivative yet, but if you notice, I've now turned this into something where the derivatives are quite nice. So g prime of x equals 1 over natural log of 2. Derivative of this is going to be a chain rule. You take what's on the inside, flip it over. Derivative of the top is 1. Derivative of this, take what's on the inside, flip it over. Derivative of the inside gives me the top, which is 1. For this one, we're just going to take the derivative, which is just 1 over x, and now I have my answer. 
let's take another look at my rule. Log of x base a equals natural log of x over natural log of a. Well, I can push the natural log of a to the other side to get this equation. Okay, the way I think about this so that I believe it, let's take e to the natural log of a log a to the x and just collapse it. So the rule for exponents is, if so I have a product up on top, I can do them one at a time. So I'm going to do the e to the natural log of a first. That's going to collapse down to an a, leaving me with a to the log base a of x. But now this is going to collapse because a and log a cancel, so I'm left with x. But now we can rewrite x as e to the natural log of x. So if you notice, we have two terms above e, and e to those terms is going to be equal. If I take natural log of both sides, that's going to cancel the e's out, and that's going to leave me with my natural log of a log a x equal to natural log of x.